Berlin's Klangwolke has been trying for years to create a new form of musical show. For that purpose, the Linz Bruckner House and its director, Karl Gerbel, have a huge stage. It is kilometers long and kilometers broad. Actually, the whole city of Linz is meant to be included, and in our production we tried to do justice to these conditions. For that reason, we hired a lot of international artists. For example, Nick Scholem, light designer for Sting. With his 144 very lights, those are computer-controlled lights, he made a big contribution to the optical side of the show. Such a vast show to do, um, and it's for one night, and it's got to be perfect, otherwise I will be shot. <laughs> The stage, with its impressive dimensions and a weight of nearly 6,000 metric tons, high-tech from conception to setup to presentation of Symphonia Globalis, plus a who's who of the contemporary event scene. Despite the technics and the huge stage area, we were striving for unity in Symphonia Globalis. Technology was not allowed to destroy the idea of the piece, and the technical team succeeded marvelously in keeping that unity intact. This, meine ich, is dem technischen team sehr gut gelungen. In 1995, my first symphony, Misa Pazis, was performed as part of the Linz Klangwolke. Misa Pazis is dedicated to peace among people. Roland Baumgartner, born in 1955 in the Austrian city of St. Pölten, wrote his first jazz symphony at the age of nine. He studied composition, piano and trumpet at the Vienna Conservatory in Cleveland and in Tanglewood with Leonard Bernstein. After working successfully as a trumpet soloist and conductor, he became, at 22, director of the school music program at Salzburg's prestigious Mozarteum. In 1979, he gave up that secure job for the life of a freelance composer. His breakthrough came with film music for Mel Ferrer and Helmut Berger. He went on to write film music for American, British, and German productions. His biggest orchestral work so far far was Misa Pazis, composed for the American Bicentennial and premiered in Philadelphia. The Bruckner House in Linz commissioned an adaptation of it for the 1995 Klangwolke. Symphonia Globalis is Roland Baumgartner's second large-scale orchestral work. Symphonia Globalis, the 1996 Klangwolke work, is dedicated to peace between people and nature. I believe that our planet, our sensitive environment, is worth protecting, and that today's children have a right to a future on this planet. And that is why I do not take an aggressive approach, but rather use sensitive and gentle means to make positive people realize that our planet is worth preserving, and that we must treat nature in a prudent way. Wert ist, erhalten zu werden und dass wir sehr umsichtig und sorgsam mit unserer Natur umgehen sollten. Therefore, I dedicated Symphonia Globalis to David McTaggart, the co-founder of Greenpeace, because I believe that David McTaggart is a hero of our time. For example, he went to Chernobyl and saved 7,000 children. He went to Muraroa Atoll and tried to stop nuclear tests. I believe that people who are prepared to take such action should have a big work dedicated to them.
Im 21. Jahrhundert, so David McTaggart, ist der Aktivismus, mit dem Greenpeace 24 Jahre lang gearbeitet hat, obsolet geworden. Die Regierungen haben gelernt, damit umzugehen. Diese Annäherung hier hat Zukunft. My future projects include three big events, Misa Pazis in Wales, a peace concert for Britain and Ireland, and a performance of Symphonia Globalis in Moscow for the renewal of Chernobyl and its concrete sarcophagus, a benefit concert to be seen all over the world. Chernobyl and the sarcophag of Chernobyl to renewal and as a benefit concert to the world. Another of my coming projects is a multimedia musical called Excalibur. It's the story of uniting the people on our planet, an end to fighting. The story of King Arthur and his magic sword Excalibur, which is a symbol of peaceful power. In Analogie zur Geschichte des König Arthos mit dem Zauberschwert Excalibur, das die Kraft, die friedliche Kraft zwischen den Menschen symbolisiert. In four movements, earth, water, fire and air, Symphonia Globalis spans an arch from medieval minnesong to the modern era. It is written in the symphonic style of today for large orchestra, a rhythm group, large mixed chorus, children's chorus, soprano, tenor and ethnic musical instruments. There's a special role for the big Bruckner House organ. The sung texts are quotations from world literature. Texts by famous Austrian authors are incorporated at important points. The Symphonia Globalis. Symphonia Globalis is composed in four movements after the four elements: earth, water, fire, and air. The first movement is the earth the genesis of our cosmos, the Big Bang in space, the creation of the Earth, our blue planet, which was meant to carry mankind and life through space as gently as an ark. Bis zur Entstehung unserer Erde, des blauen Planeten, der die Menschen und das Leben sanft wie eine Arche durchs Weltall tragen soll.
Der zweite Satz. The second movement is water as a synonym for life. Everything that lives comes from water. First the one-celled organisms, then the lower animals, the higher animals, and finally humans personified as Adam and Eve. Die Menschen gezeigt als Adam und Eva, als Mann und Frau in einem They sing a love duet. And that is what makes us different from animals, that people can know themselves and are capable of loving.
dritte Satz. The third movement is fire. It tells what humans and the human mind develop from nature. It shows what people invent, how people conduct research, how people shape their lives on this planet. Wie Menschen Forschung betreiben und wie Menschen ihr Leben auf diesem Planeten gestalten. The fourth movement is the air. For me, air is the vision of a livable future. Air makes it possible for us to breathe and, let us hope, will give our children a future life on this planet. Ein Leben auf diesem Planeten in Zukunft möglich macht.
There is no going further without the fire biting you. Do not be deaf to the singing of beyond.